Are you up to with our teaching points? Oh, um, thank you. That is. Oh, we nearly finished the book, people. Very exciting. Right, yes, etude. Let's play etude first and then we will talk about how to attack it. It's an extremely challenging piece to teach. Thank <laughs> you. 
to memorise words. So, you know, they will find that more stressful, not helpful. But attitude, I think it's quite useful for most kids because it's such a demon of a piece. So the song goes... Oh, wait, can I do it? Yes. It's on... Well, I'll send you the words. I'm just trying to remember. It's quite got quite awful gender roles, and I did do some change of it. I think you might have to have the 1980s version from when I was a kid. Henrietta Popper left a had a special friend to play called Wilhelmina Window Cleaner and she brought along her football. That's good gender, right, at least. Henrietta Popper left her kicked the ball right to her friend called Wilhelmina Window Cleaner but it went right through the window. This is the man bit. Mother came right down the stairs and called to father. Father came right down the stairs and quickly picked up Henrietta Popper left her, picked her up and told her off and sent her straight to bed. Uh, so that is how that goes. And um, I think lots of them find it really helpful because otherwise the ding, 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 it just becomes like a, you know, a whole sea of different ones and threes. Right, so this is the big mountain piece apart from Gossack of book one. What will you have made sure you have taught well before they finish and Antino? One thing, Freya. Uh, the bow stroke, so from Song of the Wind and Perpetual Motion. Yeah, excellent, good. Bex? Uh, we need to do low twos, so there's a G major scale. Good, when are you going to introduce that? Um, ooh, around Allegretto? Nope. Mm -hmm. Kit? Um, I'm not sure. Okay, after, at the very latest, after perpetual motion, like way before, during perpetual motion would be ideal. Um, so we to introduce a scale? Yeah, low twos. So, and how are you teaching? So, I would put teach G major finger pattern at the top of page 34. Um, what are you teaching them in order to learn that low two finger pattern? What exercises would you introduce?
I recommend that you introduce the first box while you're playing Andantino. But there's really no such thing. Well, no, there is like such a thing as too early. Free twinkle would be too early. But you know, like you can do it earlier than when I say. If you have a student that you think, oh my god, they're really going to struggle with that, ask yourself why are they really going to struggle with that? Because that means that there are problems elsewhere. But also, you think, okay, well, if they're going to struggle with it, just bring it earlier. That's completely fine. If a child's playing Allegro, you can teach them low twos, no worries. Even Mason, not long ago. Just don't pile it in on top of the same, a new piece like Allegro has got all those retakes. You don't want to then give them uh, low twos to think about at the same time, at, right at the beginning. So wait until they can do their retakes, and then you're thinking, okay, they're kind of coasting a bit now getting a Lego ready for a credit but not ready to move on for the next piece yet so I can insert a new exercise for them in their practice. Does that make sense? Yeah? So the first four notes, I'm sure you're getting the idea of this now, we're going to take out to uh, Busy Busy Stop Stops. Keep your one on, tip to D. Now can you land your three on the D string, not the A string? That will be quite a challenge for some of them. If you need to simplify it, you can just practice tapping the D string while the one is on the A string. Yeah? But lots of them will be fine. We're just going to do that. Now you're going to take one and three off at the same time. Go to D. Add the three. That's the, that's the crucial word. Add the three. And then jump them both off together. And uh, no violins, but join me in a little line over here. When you finished your writing. So one line facing that wall next to me, please. There we go. So this is a fun way to introduce it for them and they really like this. So this is our first finger. We're going to put it down on the A string. We're going to play one. D, you've got an open string, so the other three, this is the three, is not on the string. You're going to add your three, it's on a different string, so can you feel your fingers are on different strings? So, one, D, three, and then what have we got to do for the next one? Lift this one to the open A. No. Nearly. Jump. Yeah, do, because there are no feet, no, no fingers down on the A, yeah, because you're taking them both off. Yeah. So let's do that all together. It's quite a funny group, as long as you don't have so many kids, there's not enough room. Okay, so one's ready. One, D, sing with me. Three, A. Yeah? One more time. I'm scared about the violin. Yeah, don't jump on your violin. Okay, one, ready? One, I'm the only person singing. One, D, three, A. Yeah? Very good. So that's like just a fun thing. And you can do that in a tiny teaching room, you know, you don't need lots of space. And it really gives them that sense of like, right, you've got to really think about those fingers, make sure they're going in different places together, and then take them both off at the same time. Very good for energetic children that find it difficult just to think about their fingers and not move their whole bodies. Good. Um, so in preview, they will have busy, busy, stop, stop on those first four notes during Allegretto or Andantino. They will also be doing a G major scale two octaves by then. Keep it in review, the, the G major scale. Don't just teach it to them and then forget about it. Ask them to practice it every practice. So you've got that first box, and then as soon as they're ready to make it down, up, down, up, that's fine. You, you know, you can judge when to drop the busy, busy stop stops. We also have the fourth finger, like in perpetual motion, but approached with a low two. So you want your next box to start on the penultimate note of bar three, right at the end of that line, first line. And the box is A, one, two, four, three, two, one. Why isn't it just two, four, three, two? You've got to hold the first finger down. That's on box. You, exactly. You want to build the hand frame like it comes in the piece. So they're going to play A, one, two. So we put that in the box so that they're practicing the same hand shape. And some of them who don't have a spot for their four or a strike for their four will need it here. 
because they won't be able to pitch it otherwise, and some of them won't. It will be, you know, in individual. So with these boxes, I want to be clear, we're not expecting, if you look at my book and you think, well, you've got the first box, you've got that box we just talked about, and then I've got one, two, three, four more boxes on top of that. I'm not suggesting that your six or seven year old student on Etude would practice for four weeks, four or five or six boxes every day. <laughs> but you introduce them and then you drop them as they master them and you add the new ones. So you would hope that by the, if you're doing Etude, the first box, um, during Allegretto, you would hope that by the time you get to Andantina, they don't need to do 1, D, 3, A anymore. So then you could add A, 1, 2, 4, 3, 2, 1, and they've still got one preview box. Um, in fact, that is not what I suggest you do as a preview box, sorry. I suggest you do the end as your second preview box. So the last two bars, because once they get to the A3, it is just their G major scale descending. So they just practice dun 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 which makes it super easy for them, but it's still good for their twos to practice moving and they practice the G string at speed. So then maybe they're practicing Andantino by this point, ready, you know, hoping for credit in a couple of weeks. And the next preview boxes that I would add would be bar nine up to the top A in bar 10. So they would practice that as a preview box, mostly for this part. This is just the scale, they know how to do that. And then once they've got that, so maybe the week after, so this is overlapping boxes, and when you've got these pieces that Dr. Suzuki wrote in book one that have strings of even notes. You want to make sure that you don't build in a gap that doesn't exist in the actual piece. So if you practice, for example, do, 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 or even just the G major scale, and then you practice the next bar, bar 10, and then you practice the next bar, bar 11, when you put them all together, they're going to find it really difficult to string them together. Whereas if you put your boxes overlapping by one note, then when they put them together, they know what that note leads on to because they've practiced starting with that note. Does that make sense? So the fourth box ends at the A on the E string. Yeah, so if you have a look at my if you have a look at my music, which is also on your on the thing, you've got this kind of overlapping box. That one, yeah. That you've got do 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 but then that's the first note of the next box. So just going back to, um, you know the box um, from the end of bar three? Yes. Would you get the child to put down their third finger after the first quiver of bar four? Like, duh, and then so it's prepped for like them feeling back their fingers, or is that like... I just am guided by the sound. If they can do that, with that if they can do it, however they do it, basically if the four goes down independently and then they do walking fingers to the three and the two going down, uh, well, not independently, it's got the one on. Uh, and, then, you know, some of them lift the two so that they can get to the four, as long as they don't lift both the one and the two. Okay. Some of them put three and four down, some of them put four down and then walk to the three. If it sounds good, good it's fine. Yeah, that's the thing. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Good, so during Allegret and Antino, you're working your way through those last, those middle two preview boxes that we were just playing. And then by the time they start the piece, you can have the joyful experience of saying to them, well, you can already play this, and look how much that happens. Dun, 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 here it is again. Dun, 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 dun. Well, one, three, two, one, easy peasy. Do, 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 mostly open strings, easy peasy. Do, 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 Okay, you can play that, no problem. Oh, look, it's the same. Do, 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 in the middle of bar eight. And then, oh my goodness, you can play this. Wow, you can play this. And then, what happens at the end? Harry, and then you've done this box as well. So 
one piece. How many notes have you got to learn? Three. Not, oh my God, here's etude. Right, let's introduce low twos. Let's introduce G string. Let's introduce really difficult memory. Let's introduce difficult string crossing. Let's introduce, you know, like, please don't do that to your students. So you really want to make sure that you are leading up to the state where you introduce etude as, this is the piece that everyone's worried about, but look what you've already done. You can already do most of this piece. Not the opposite way around. Sorry, was it during perpetual motion that you're going to do all the low two? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, if not earlier. Okay. So basically the preparation for the second half of book one is during some time between long, long ago and perpetual motion, low twos. Some time between long, long ago and perpetual motion using all four strings at the very latest during Allegretto. And then during Allegretto, sandwiching the first and the last preview boxes of Etude. During Andantino, teaching the middle two preview boxes so that by the time they finish Andantino, all you've got to do is string it together and learn which is quite easy and you give them that one box from the end of bar three and the box in bar eight plus one note. So those are the two boxes that most of my students will play while they're actually playing the whole piece, like the regular boxes are a one, two, four, three, two, one, and two, four, three, two, one, three, one, three, two. So that's a box. And right. the rest of them they've dropped because they were preview boxes and they can do them already. So it's bar eight a box? Yeah, that's a normal box, it's not a preview box. Uh, see, that's why Yeah, so the previews are in purple. In my part, the previews are in purple and you've got four of them. So in Allegretto, you're bookending this piece, you're doing the first and the last preview box. During Andantino, you're doing those middle two preview boxes, which is bar nine plus uh, five notes, and from the top A to the end of 11. Don't put them together as one box thinking, well, you might as well just do it in one go because you want to isolate what's difficult and practice those over and over again. Don't just do one four bar box with loads of difficult things in. And so by the time they actually start playing the piece, go home and work out how to play the first line of attitude. The two boxes you've got are the end of bar three into bar four for the fourth finger and bar eight plus a note for the string crossing arpeggio bit. So you, I think for your teaching points, it would be a good idea to have basically what I just outlined written really clearly on a whole sheet of paper before, you know, during perpetual motion this, during allegretto this, during andantino this, when you start etude this. This is basically the most complicated piece to teach apart from Gossip of Rock. And in fact, in some ways, it's more complicated than Gossip of Rock. Gossip is just huge, but it doesn't actually have that many new things in it as this does. Okay? I really hated this piece and wished it wasn't in book one for years, and it wasn't until I worked out that this is how I should approach it, and now it's just completely fine. Just don't worry about it. Front load, new skills. All right? Great, wow, we've got only five pieces to go. Not even halfway through the year. Get us. Right, so we come back together at half past, no, at five past two for you, for you two, for you lot. Okay? Five past two, five past two, one hour. Oh no, let's say two o'clock. The kids are coming at two. Okay.